So it's six minutes past, so um, I guess let's start. Um, so you already know why you're here. What we're going to talk about today um, is who I am. Uh, there are, I, 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 I wanted to have some code examples in GitHub. Uh, the, the repo is there. It didn't turn out exactly as I wanted to. Uh, but still welcome to have a look at it. Um, uh, an introduction of what Paragraphs is, um, some advanced use cases, um, and if everyone is interested in contributing back, how they can do that. Um, and then we probably have a discussion, and I'm, I'm open to hear suggestions, questions, and anything in between. So who I am? Um, my name is Tasos Kutlas. I'm Senior Technical Consultant at Cameron Wilding. Over the years, I've been involved with web projects, machine learning uh, things, image processing stuff, administering systems, and I'm a Scrum Master as well. The GitHub repo I've set up is um, on my GitHub account uh, for Drupal Khan London. There's some automation going on. There's a script there to set things up. And my intention was to have different branches um, with different configuration um, now that we are all Drupal 8. Um, well, yeah, use it at your own risk, basically. <laughs> and yeah, if you have the, the script accepts, if you have like, multiple versions of trust, as I do, you can pass it in so you can, you're not stuck. Um, so, what is Paragraphs? I, I like to see it as a way to add components in a page um, without to have to add individual fields. Uh, it's like a field collection, but better. So usually, especially in the Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 days, what we used to, when we wanted to create a content type, or we wanted to depict some content on a page, we created different fields. Uh, and that was a good approach, but as, as content grew, uh, larger and larger, all the actual needs of organizations in terms of content grew, then we needed to accommodate more fields. And then we ended up having edit forms uh, that were massive. That was on one hand. The other hand was to give the editors the full um, experience in a way of full control and give them a CK editor instance, for, in, for example. And then we usually ended up with markup that wasn't really great uh, to work with. So paragraphs comes and in between of that. Um, they provide control structure, and, but also you get a useful editing experience. And they allow some creativity in assembling a page to the editors without um, sacrificing uh, that structure. And an added bonus to it is that if you are um, into working in an agile way and you also have um, atomic design principles within your code, then you can tie these, these three together. So you can have really small granular pieces of functionality delivered within a sprint um, that follow those atomic designs, but in the back end. So you can have a component doing one, one thing, and then you can style it separately on your style guide, um, and you have your commit, and that's your story, and you commit that, push it to production. So, whoops. Before we go to the advanced use cases, let's have a simple example. So um, let's imagine we need um, an image um, in our code, uh, in our content type. So the easiest way to do that is create a paragraph, a component, with an image field and a caption field. And we can get something like that. So that is within a node, and that is a paragraph type. Or I usually refer it as component in my talk. So you can add as many of these components as you like. So if you want multiple images, you can add more. If we just backtrack a bit, um, if you just enable the uh, paragraphs module, then you can see there's a paragraph types uh, menu item within structure. And within there, there are all the different paragraph types. It's exactly the same paradigm that you have uh, with uh, field collection. So you have a separate entity that is accommodating fields. The main difference I see is field collection is always um, the same set of fields, whereas paragraph types is different fields. So you can have any of these and you can add your own. And by, a by adding your own, you just create, you go through the same process of creating, um, uh, adding fields to a node. 
So if, you, if, you, if we put that together at a node, at a node level, then we have our title up there. There's, there's down here a drop-down menu that has all the paragraph types that we have, all the components that we can add to the page. And then we can select components. In this particular example, we have an image component, and then we have a text component. So that part, uh, and they are draggable between them. So you can switch the order of them and do whatever you want with them. So essentially what you end up with is a way to display an image to a page, uh, a caption of that image, and then a way to display some text. And that's okay for most use cases, but the, the real um, advantage of using paragraphs is the control that you get. So what if we wanted to extend the components that we had and we wanted a block quote component? By just going back into the HTML5 specification, we can see that the block quote is an element that represents content uh, that's quoted from another source. Um, it optionally has a citation, and which should be within site or a footer element. Essentially, come on, we want this. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was working with front end in Drupal 7 especially, having just that in the front end was really painful. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, we need to add another component. To add the component, we just need two text fields. One is for, for the quote text and one is for the quote citation. And that's it, essentially, if we, create, if we just add to those, those two fields. But if we add content to them, then we end up with that HTML. These, after all, are text fields that Drupal knows that usually are placed within divs and paragraphs. And they have, um, well, paragraph tags, I mean. Um, and that CSS is applied on top of it. So we still didn't get that. So how about we go to do that, exactly? So that's where power of twig comes in and d8. Essentially, everything is a template. Everything is overridable. Every entity gets a template. Every bundle gets a template. And every view mode gets a template. So that's quite a lot in our arsenal. The solution to that is to have a field HTML twig. That's, that's only a, an example for this particular talk. Maybe you need some more logic in that uh, template, but works well for this uh, instance. So you just list out the content um, of, of a field, and then you create a paragraph block quote HTML, um, HTML twig template with exactly the HTML that you want, and you rebuild your thin cast, then you get this, which is much better from an HTML5 perspective. So where does that lead, essentially? That leads to us having full control over what the HTML um, generated is, and also, create really rich experiences with it. So we have a way to create exactly the HTML we want while giving the editors the power to add any component they want. And we do that within one single content type. So essentially, we can use one content type, or many, depending on the use case, but the simplest form is use one content type and you can create all those different HTML structures within your pages. And that's where the real power is. In this particular example, you can see that there's, there's a title, there's a hero image, there are several subtitles within, and text and images that they are full, um, and block quotes and text with the images on the side. And that's quite complicated, but you can get that from just one single content type. As, as, as you can get just the title and the, and the piece of text for a press release, you can get that or you can also get a landing page. Uh, and I think that, that's where the power of, of paragraphs lie. So just to summarize that, that um, you can compartmentalize your code 
You can follow atomic design principles, but on your back end. And that works really well when you work in agile projects to align front end guys with back end guys. You can reuse your, your components, obviously. So when you have a paragraph um, component within, uh, well, a paragraph field within a content type, um, and you create another content type with a paragraph field in it, then you can reuse, you can choose and reuse your components in there. So essentially you create once and you can use in multiple times. And you have way better control on the accessibility of, of the page that you're creating. And you follow standards, you can follow conventions. Essentially you have full control of the HTML and the markup that's, that's produced. Um, and I think that sums up the introduction. Um, if we leave it at that, we, we get to a point where we have really nice content on the page, but nothing more than that. So the second trick um, that ties really well um, with uh, view modes is linking content between different parts of, of your site. So there are two ways of linking content. One is manual, which you can do that with any references. And the other is automatic, that you can do under certain criteria or contextual filters or filters in general through views. So I'll talk uh, briefly about these two uh, as well. There are some challenges ahead for paragraphs and how we can do that, but there are some solutions already in place. So at the node level, there's entity references, so you can reference other content, and at the site level, there are views. The nice thing to remember, um, and to keep in your back of your mind, is that views are entities in Drupal 8. They're not content entities, but they are entities. So, what if we had a related content widget, just a, as, as another paragraph type, as another component within our paragraphs? Um, that can look like that, and you can link content. That is a manual procedure. But, essentially, if you want to create something really simple, you can have a site that needs a landing page with a few uh, out onwards journeys, uh, and a content page that they can accommodate text, images, and some fancy um, slideshows. Essentially, you can, you can do all that within one content type. So you have that use case. Usually an entity reference renders as a link by default um, in Drupal. And that's the case in both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. Um, that's the HTML that's produced. So that doesn't really look good for a, for a particular uh, landing page. So we need something more. Um, that comes from the field formatter. The field formatter can have a rendered entity, and where the really nice trick comes, when you have that rendered entity, you can reference specific view mode. And as such, specific view mode gets its own template. So essentially, you control that HTML too. And you can get really granular. Well, I'll move on. The, the second is views. So what we, what we saw on linking already was that you can get your content, you can link to it, and then you can have a template that controls that, that how that depicts. Um, but views are, um, well, sorry, I got confused. That's about view mode still. When you, when you work in, a, in, in, in Drupal 7, View modes were really difficult to add in a site, essentially. You had to, to create a hook, an info hook, and then you needed to do that through code. In Drupal 8, they are first class citizens. We have a view modes interface uh, that can allow you to add view modes. Essentially, what you do there is create a new view mode, and then on your field display, you can go and see, say which fields are going to be available. When you do that, then you can create a template, and those fields are there and you can use it within your HTML structure. So essentially, paragraphs, entity references, and view modes are best friends forever. 
You can manually link content and create widgets. You can replicate your markup that you want and you wish. <coughs> and you can create reusable facets of the data. But if you, we move on from that, we need automatic ways. I mean, it's nice to have a small and single site that you can link content between, but usually that leaves a, a large part of Drupal sites out of the equation because lots of us use taxonomies to create um, different linking strategies and then use views to, create, to, to, us, to, to use that, that, that linking strategy within pages. So, as I said before, views are entities in D8. They are not content entities though. So there's no display format at the moment that you can render a view. I was searching about that and there's the views field formatter module. It's not a perfect solution, but it's good enough if somebody wants to start with it. And what that does is you can create an entity reference field that references a view. And then on your formatter, you can have a view. And then there's a drop-down menu that you can, control, you can select any view from the system. What that essentially does is, is a small hack. You create a field, and then you say that the formatter is a view. And then you have all the views that are available in your system, and you say, please render this specific view. Well, actually, you have all the displays from the views available in your system. So essentially, you render a display on that field. There are several, um, so if you, if you, re if you reference uh, content there, you can have the content ID, the node ID passed to the view and stuff. So you can do, um, you can use it in a relation. Um, but then again, it's still a, a, a simplified way to, to, to create that automatic linking. So that's how it looks in the node. So you have a views reference field, you can choose which, which view you want, but then essentially that is not controlling the, the output. The output is controlled by formatter, and that's, that's the, the problematic thing about that. The one big advantage though that you can have either way is that views like view modes already. So if you create um, on that show there, there's content and there's fields, that, that's the two options that you usually have. So if you use content, then you can create, uh, you can choose which view mode you want. Um, and that's the one that I created before, related content. So essentially, I can end up with the same HTML, regardless of how I'm choosing to, to link content. So I can get really, um, really granular strategies on how I can assemble different content from other places of my site within my content type. And please remember, that's still one content type. So what's missing? The views field formatter is from D7. And in D7, views weren't entities. Um, so you list all the available displays that you have. You pick one, and you stick with it. So essentially, you want to add different views in your system. You need many different, many different fields. So. The next thing is, I mean, now we have an entity reference uh, field that can reference a view. It would be nice to get that view, and then on on your cog item or on your cog icon, you can say, okay, I know which view is that, which which display would you like rendered in this in this place. And that's essentially where we want to go with this. It's not there. But there was a slide about contribution, guys, so, you know. <laughs> so, um, just to see how that can materialize in, um, in production. Um, please bear in mind that this is a D7 site. Let's see how a hero image paragraph can render. That's a hero image paragraph. Somebody, an editor, can go into that site add the title, say I want a hero image, and there it is. I want some text with an image on the side, and some text, and that's, that's, that's there. Or I want the subtitle. 
And if I cannot backtrack for a second, that subtitle creates that little widget there. Or I, I want to create a reference content widget with a subtitle, and that's other pieces, and that, that's a specific view mode from another content type that is referenced there. So how to contribute? Um, that's the paragraphs issue queue, just right there, and the views field for matter issue queue. And spread the word, start using it, essentially. It is, um, it's a way to liberate yourself from having to have like multiple content types, and you can give uh, the freedom of expression to your editors. I would like to thank you uh, for your attention. And please, um, we have plenty of time to, to have some discussion um, around any questions. So thanks very much. Could you put up the link to the slides? The slides? Yeah. But it's the... It's your GitHub or something. Yeah. Well, where is it? Whoever runs that code, please bear in mind, this is D8 trying to do something complicated. <laughs> what are available to people to they are, yeah. Please. So the, the, the best I can do is this one. Um, well, give me a minute. So that, that's, that's uh, uh, the best I can do, or the closest I can do. Essentially, what you get is your title up there, and you start with this drop-down menu. So if you click that arrow, downwards arrow, then you have all your paragraph types that are listed there. there. And once you click one, on one, then you have one component added, so that's... There's a slight line here that separates these two, so but essentially you see there are two here. So that you get that. So essentially you can add as many of these blocks as you want. So if you, if you, if you remember the, the HTML the, that I did with the, the article, it's essentially replicating that, but on the front end. So if you have, let's say, a text paragraph, an image, a hero image paragraph, a subtitle paragraph, and uh, a full width image paragraph. You don't dictate where anything happens, or you don't dictate how. You don't, you don't have anything that is hard coded. You just say how, when, when, when the node renderer will see that content, you just say how that's gonna be rendered. Uh, so all that experience is given back to the editor. I found from experience that people can be really accustomed to it. One of the shortcomings is some of them, they ask for two things. Well, actually, and it's shortcomings in the paragraph modules in general. One is that you, you don't have the concept of a required field. You, you can have it within a component, but you don't have a required component. You can't say that this content type at least needs a text paragraph and hero image. And so usually, that's why usually hero images sometimes they make it in their own separate field, but yeah. Um, there is some discussion around addressing that. The second is um, some editors uh, that are really lazy, in my opinion, they just want a skeleton, a, a pre built sort of node uh, with, 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 with that, with that uh, flexibility but have some components pre-built, so you can have like a, a text component and a full width component and another text component instead of just clicking that and doing three clicks, which is something that we, um, uh, there's also discussion around addressing that, have like a, a saved state of some sort that we don't, yeah, 
I mean, there, there's no plan yet, but it, it's, it's something that comes up sometimes. So, um, other questions? Please. Um, you add a new paragraph, copy paste the image, the, the text, that, and then you can remove it also. So you just, and that's in place removal. So if you had a third one and you removed the, the middle one, then you would end up with two. So, um, yes, there's no such thing as uh, swapping between. Please. So we, we are in the process of doing that. I can't disclose for, for, for whom, uh, but it's a large uh, publication here in the UK. And they had, we, we are just phasing in paragraphs, phasing out fields. And we'll do that on the live site as we go. So. Uh, Sorry? Well, they want lots of uh, deployments, <laughs> but um, it, it, I, I can't. I, I don't see it as necessarily bad. So in Drupal Seven, if you wanted to unlock, or if you wanted to create new view modes, so Drupal comes with a few modes on its own. So it's the full node, the teaser, RSS, search. Something else I can't remember. Um, so if you wanted, for instance, a paragraph view mode or a related content, so you could say, you could create that widget I saw uh, on the examples. So you can say that, you know, the title of that, I want it to be an H3. There's a small text that I want it to be within a site element or whatever. You needed to create a, a separate module and uh, sort of like tie your new view mode uh, within the node object. So that's how you do it. It wasn't massively complicated, really easy to implement um, doing it. Uh, I've read, uh, I've actually written the documentation on Drupal.org on doing it. But so yeah, there are a few, but I mean, if you value your not having another dependency on another module, then you can just like write your own module that is like a, a, a very simple hook in for implementation. But yeah, obviously there are ways to allow people to do that. I've seen you. Can you repeat, sorry. sorry? Can you repeat your question, please? Uh, yeah, like what's the stability of, of the paragraph module in, in Drupal 8? Is it is that got an RC release? Yes. Yeah, uh, so um, for my experience, I mean, uh, I was ready to use it in production, but for other reasons, I, I couldn't, I, that project didn't go through. Uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you see the ECQ, there's no massive things on, in terms of the, um, of the core value proposition of the module, if I'm allowed to say so. But there are a few things that on extending it. Please. Um, two things. Um, one thing we found when we've been using um, Paragraph Group 37 is that we rely, the meta tag relies um, on the meta tag model scraping a part of the body of the Drupal description field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I had the same problem with it. Um, I created a preprocessor basically to create tokens from the paragraphs, and then I had that, those available within meta tags. Um, and that's how I solved it. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. The, the only short answer is yes. I can see. Um, well, there, there, there have been suggested 
other methods of going at rich web content uh, and it's, I, can't, I can't remember the name, but the guy that does the Drupal Eyes Me videos, um, Jeff Eaton. So he, he had a, a DrupalCon um, presentation last year um, in the US um, where he, he, he explained another strategy of creating tokens um, within, within your blob of text and then have preprocessor substitute content for that. Um, it sounds a great idea, um, but I have tried to do something similar like long, long ago in D6. And what I found out from that approach then, um, which I think still very much applies now, is that you don't keep the semantics of your data. So if you, if you want to port that into something else, then you don't have the semantics, the semantic information. So, well, there is no easy answer to it. I think uh, by having it separate, though, it might be a little bit more labor work, but then you, you have some of the benefits of creating, uh, when you need to port that into another system, export it in a way or port it in another Drupal version, then you can have a very uh, easy way to do that. Uh, and I think that's more important in, in some situations. Anyone else? Please? Have you encountered any problems with uh, performance in the, in the back end, like when everything is now? No, no. The, I mean, the, the performance issues from the back end. The client side. Sorry? On the client side. Yeah, the, I mean, essentially, is how many uh, text fields you're going to load with uh, CK editor instances. Um, that's, that's, that's the only problem I see. Um, we haven't had that. Um, yeah, we had some like massive changes. Mm. Which How did you solve it? We are looking into like uh, uh, vertical tabs interface, mm -hmm. which is uh, loading mm. uh, forms. Yeah, I guess. I think I think yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I think probably that's the best way to go at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah separating them out and then loading them on demand. Because essentially, if you do that, then ev ev everything is loaded at the same time. Well, it's a great tip. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I was just going to ask about, it mentioned in the description, we're going to mention about CMI with paragraphs and deployment. Well, yes, it's the failure of that repository working really well. You can experience it yourself by just <laughs> trying to follow the, <laughs> the, the directions or the readme of that repository. So essentially, it's not paragraphs and CMI. It's probably my failure to actually uh, trying to do too much with uh, the branches, essentially, and some of the um, um, CMI components uh, got a bit scumbled. Um, essentially, my experience to now, we have two D8 sites in production. Uh, and CMI is working really, really well. It's working, essentially it's working the same way that features work, but it is a different mindset, basically. It's a different thing. You just need to let go of features and understand CMI. But essentially you end up having the same uh, thing. You can export configuration and you can port it through different means. Um, anyone else? Uh, CMI is the, um, it's, it's outside of the scope of uh, this presentation, it's the um, configuration management initiative. Um, essentially, it's, it's how we refer to exporting configuration in Drupal 8. Um, it doesn't make sense because it was an initiative, but then everybody still calls it CMI. <laughs> and it's just like exporting the configuration. You can export like paragraphs, it, they are entities, so it's... Uh, Whatever you expect from entities, like blocks or node types and fields, it's exactly the same thing. You can export it, import it elsewhere. So if there's no other questions, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for being here. <laughs>